Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at the first things to do when you set up a NAS drive. We're going to be setting up this NAS drive from TerraMaster, and uh, this one I'll be also giving away on my Discord server. So make sure you're on my Discord server for a chance of uh, getting this TerraMaster F2223 NAS drive. Now, this one does have an Intel Celeron N4505, which is a dual core 2 gigahertz with a maximum boost of 2.9 gigahertz. It comes with four gigabytes uh, pre-installed in the system, which does have two slots on it, which supports up to 32 gigabytes of memory. So pretty decent for upgradability uh, for memory. And again, this is exactly what you can get inside the box. And uh, it will be a Ethernet cable here. And we'll also have a power adapter to power the actual NAS drive itself. This is a UK plug here. There's the specs on the actual adapter here. And uh, you can see it's a switching adapter. It does come with a barrel connector on here. We also have down here some rubber grommets, anti-vibration rubber grommets by the looks of it, and some screws for so maybe you want to put in some SSD in here or something like that. And we have some rubber feet, anti-vibration rubber feet here. We also have some stickers here. If you want to use these, you can do. And again, we also have the user manual quick start guide and warranty here as well. And we also have the NAS drive, which we'll go through in more detail in a second. So here is the NAS drive. So let's go ahead and take a look at the NAS. So we do have two bays here, three and a half inch and also two and a half inch uh, SATA drives you can put in here. Maximum of 40 terabytes, that's 20 terabytes times two. On here, they are hot swappable. So as you can see on the front, we've got our power button and our LED lights and the two drive bays here, pull these out. And it is a tallest design here, which means we can just put in a three and a half inch drive in here with these little clip on clips here. I'll show you how to do that in a second. You will need to use screws for two and a half inch drives, which do fit in this actual drive bay as well. So if you want to use solid state drives, you can. Drives will not be included when I give this away. So you will need to purchase your own drives. And this is the actual drives I'm going to be putting in here to show you how to set this up. Pretty straightforward and easy to do. You just slot in the drive. And if you are going to use drives, uh, make sure you use the uh, Iron Wolf drives or equal for Western Digital. So just clip these in. There's an arrow showing you which way to clip this in, and this will hold the drive in. And that's all you need to do there. Now, for extra security, you could screw these drives in as well at the bottom. But I think this should be perfectly fine. You can see here the screw holes on the bottom there. So I'll do both of those, and I'll get these pushed in here. Now, this does also support two M.2 2280 NVMe slots on here, which are inside the actual unit. So you do need to take it apart to get access to that if you want to add those in. And again, as you can see here, we have our power input here and we have our two Ethernet ports. These are 2.5 uh, gigabit Ethernet ports. We also have two 3.1 uh, USB ports on here and we also have a HDMI. Uh, port on here as well. The fan itself is an 80 millimeter fan, and this is a smart fan, which means you can run it at high speed, medium speed, or low speed. Unit weighs 2.4 kilograms, and also the actual size of it is 227 times 119 times 133 millimeters. So to insert the actual drives here, it's pretty straightforward. All you need to do is put it onto a hard surface here. And all we need to do here is uh, offer up our drives, make sure you got them around the right way, and then push them in. Now, the way you push these in is push up the top until you're all the way down, and then push down the bottom, and this will clip it into position. Pretty straightforward stuff. And uh, once you've got these in, we'll give it a bit of power and some Ethernet. And once we've got that done, uh, we will then uh, obviously be able to set this up. So, as you can see, I've got the Ethernet cable plugged in, and I've got this going to my router or you can plug it into a switch. I've got some power to it, and I've now powered the device on. So once we've done this, we can then head over to the computer, and now we can go and set this up with our quick setup guide here. Very simple and easy to set these up. Now, if you're running a different particular type of uh, NAS drive, your uh, settings may be different. Now, if you check your packaging, you'll see a quick setup guide here, just like this one here, and it'll have all the instructions on how to uh, get this set up and installed, but I'll show you how to do it. So we're going to head over to the browser and we're going to open up 
a link here, which is on one of the actual cards here. So let's push enter in once we get the uh, link up the top. And this will help you set up your NAS for the very first time. If you've never set up a NAS before, it will run you through uh, some images and some text, and it will tell you exactly how to do it. So first off, what you need to do is give them your email address and you can put in there which model you've got. And it will obviously be this one. So you want to set this up. Uh, if you're buying a TerraMaster, any of the other ones, it will be the same process. So choose whatever one you want to do here. And once you get your selection, choose which number of drive slots it has and choose which product category it is, whether it's a TNAS or whether it's another type of NAS. So what you're going to do is put in your email and push start. And this will give you all the information for that particular NAS on what you need to do. It's very simple and easy to follow. Just go and click the little blue arrow down the bottom to run through the slides there. Now, once you've got all that done, head back over to your browser and type in here the tnas-local and push continue to site. This will give you a countdown. That's just going to load up the uh, bootloader from the server. So please wait until it gets to the end and it will start to initialize your NAS. So you can see here, it's now going to give you a warning saying using incompatible uh, desktop hard drives, example, Barracuda or any other unhealthy old drives are likely to fail and you can lose data. How do you want to initialize your TNAS? Well, you can use default or custom. Read the information down on the screen here and it will let you know exactly uh, what option to take. So default will give you a default configuration, which is relatively simple and fast or you can use the custom one. So let's just take a look at custom here. This will give you a step-by-step -step guide and you'll have to go through here. This is more for professional use. If you want it simple, just leave it on the default and uh, go with this option. So you can see here, data on the hard drive one and the hard drive two will be deleted and it will start to install the TOS onto our hard drives. This does take a bit of time. It's gonna download this onto at the actual NAS itself, and it will go through the installation process and set it all up for us. So you can see here, it's gonna restart the uh, NAS drive. And now what we need to do here is click on the continue to site. Don't worry, this is perfectly normal to see this screen. We're gonna to go to the next screen. And now we need to set up a super user for our NAS drive. Now this is pretty straightforward. Just set up your username, your password that you want to use and a security email and then you will get the verification code sent to that email where you can then uh, verify it. Just go next and you should now be at the desktop here. As you can see, we're at the uh, screen here, read the terms, conditions, agree to these, and basically we can now start setting up our NAS for the very first time. If you look here, it's starting to synchronize uh, the storage pool here for us. That will take some time. So I'll speed this process up and get to the next stage. But we'll just leave these initializing. The more drives you have, the longer this will take. Now, under the security advisor, it will give you some options to say whether your password is too weak and some other options that you can go through and make them more secure for your own benefit and own safety. So make sure you do those uh, for your needs. Next up, we can take a look at the backup solutions here. As you can see, there's tons of backup options if you want to start setting up a backup for your phone or your PC or whatever it is you want to back up, you can use the one of the backup options available here. Next up, we can take a look at the remote access. If you want to try to access this remotely, then you can do by setting up a remote access. We're not gonna go through that in this video, but the options are there and they're available. Now, TerraMaster, I thought about everything here. You've got the technical support and the security advisor and the help. If you need help with any of the things that you're trying to do with your NAS, you can go through the help options and there'll be a full blown tutorial on there teaching you how to do it. Now there's loads of apps in here, whether you want to back up or whether you want to set up a website or whether you want to maybe set up a, a media center for your movies and things like that. You can do pretty much anything inside here. You can set up virtual machines and other things like maybe you've got some photos you can set up some photos here so you can sync them with your phone and then share them with your family. You can do all sorts of stuff here. You can set up a VPN server, whatever it is you want to do. There's an application inside here. Now you don't have to use a NAS for any one thing 
at a time. You can do multiple different things with an ad. So you can have a host in a website and you can still set up uh, some sort of photos on here or backup. You can see we have Docker here as well. Uh, Embry uh, server, which is great, or Plex Media server as well on here. That's if you want to set up a uh, Plex Media server or Embry Media server for all your movies and things like that, TV shows. So you can set that up. Now, what I'd advise you to do is get yourself a very large external drive and back up your NAS to that as well. And you can plug that into one of the USB ports. I've made a video on that, so check out my video playlist. That is an essential bit of kit because your NAS is not a backup. It's basically a place where you store stuff, and you can also store it in the cloud and also onto a backup or an external drive. And there's plenty of other options, so make sure you've got plenty of backups of all your data. Now, if you want to set up your file manager here, you can go inside here and we can set up a user account. So if you want to set up a user account, let me show you how we're going to go do that. Go into control panel here and we've got plenty of options available in here. Users, you can go in here and set up a user. So maybe you've got your wife or your kids or maybe you've got your mum or whatever it is you want to create an account for. You can go here and click on plus to add a user and put in a name. We'll just call it test. Give it a description and give it a password. Pretty simple stuff here. And once you've got this done, you'll be able to create another user on your NAS. So you can have multiple users on here. You can set up a guest account. You can have it as a read only or read and write. So if you want to allow them to send files to your NAS or download files or only view files, you can set all that up here. I'll show you that in a second. But once you've got your username and your password set up here, uh, this will be uh, pretty much ready for use for that person. So let's go ahead and I'll just quickly go next here. And it's going to say how much storage limit you want to give them. And you can give them no limit. And you can also go through here, admin, all users or media. You can set this up to exactly what you want to uh, do here. So once you're happy with this, we're going to go to the next screen here and we'll go ahead and click next. Here we've got the area where we can give them the permissions. So whether you want to give them a read only or read and write permissions, or you can deny them uh, privileges, you can do that here. So if they're already on the account and you want to stop them from having read and write access, you can just deny them or delete them altogether. But there you can see we do have our test user on there right now, and they have normal status here. Now, again, if you wanted to get a user group, you can get up a user group here. And we can also now give a shared folder. So maybe you want to create a shared folder. You can just go up here, create a shared folder. And what you can do is use it on volume one. And you can then go and give this a name. Let's just say we want to call this folder uh, photos or something like that. There we go. And we can now add this in here, give a description. And we can do some other options here. Click next. And now we can encrypt this folder if we want to. Or we can enable a recycle bin on here. Go next, and we can give this by user or by user group, no limit, or whatever you want to do here. So click next. We'll leave this uh, as by user here. And what I'll do is we'll give this to the test person here. We can deny access to other people and have it only for one person. We can give them read only access, or we can give them read and write access, depending on what you want them to do here. So if you want them to be able to upload photos uh, to your NAS, you can give them read and write access. Pretty simple stuff. So go next. And there we go. Enable storage quota here. This will give them so much storage that they want. So remember how much storage you've got in your NAS. I'm going to give them one gigabyte. And we can then create that basic uh, storage pool for them there of one gigabyte. Obviously, there's not going to be much they can do with one gigabyte, but you get the general idea. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at here. ISO shared folders, you can put in ISOs here. And then we have our photos, and we've now got that all set up. So that's your basic setup of your NAS. Again, you can install plugins and whatever you want to do. Set up a Plex Media Server or Embry Server and put all your movies on there. Create a media folder, stick all your movies in there, and away you go. So pretty simple stuff. But now if you want to access on your computer, go to your computer, click network, and you should see uh, the Terramaster pop up here and give it the name or whatever name you've given it. Log into there by giving it the username and password. 
So whether it be for the administrator account or whether it be for the user account that you set up, just put in your details and I'm going to just put the details in and click remember my details and click OK. And this will then give you access to the folders on your NAS. So you can just drag and drop stuff on there. Very simple. Anyway, that is going to be about it. So I hope this video has been some sort of use to you. If you want to have a chance of uh, getting this uh, NAS drive, then make sure you're on my Discord server. Link is in the video description. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group, whether it be first tier, second tier or third tier. I really do appreciate the support. I just want to say a quick shout out to Michael Gadda, RTX Brody, David Lees, Waleed. Also, PC Repair Tech, Edward Kelly, Albert Hewson, Celtic Lad, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, Jedi Buddhist, Geo Sam, and Welsh Tony One. I really do appreciate the support, guys, for the tier three. And uh, I shall catch you on the Discord server for a chat, or I'll see you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.